Hello, and welcome to this week's uh, Men's League TV update for September 13th. Uh, beautiful day yesterday, uh, not too hot, and uh, unfortunately, the scores were very good. I'll get to that in a minute. But we do have a low net of 28 made by Ryan Gilchrist. Ryan uh, uh, Birdie had four, sorry, no birdies, but four pars. And uh, it, with his handicap, scored a net 28 for 25 points. Congratulations, Ryan. Good day for you. Um, Alex Holt was second with 29 and low net of 29. Uh, interesting score for Alex. Every every hole was a four. So he had, <laughs> he had nine fours. Um, and uh, there were three players at 22 points each. Uh, Jim Delahunty was one, and uh, he managed to uh, par every hole. So that's kind of neat um anyway scoring was down uh we didn't have uh i think it was 14 players that uh, had 20 or more points and only 14s uh so i don't know why conditions seem to be very good yesterday I, I can't figure it out some days you you get lots of wind and everything's soggy and scores are great and some days you get a nice day like yesterday and they just didn't pan out Okay, we're here to uh, pick the uh, hidden score on four, the the number that we're going to use. And let me just share the screen here. Okay, so you see I have three, four, five, and six. Generate random names. Actually, it's just going to be a number. The answer is going to be here. So the hidden score on four is... Five. See who's got a five on number four. We'll just go to the share screen here. And we have these players here who've got a five on number four. And the winner of this is going to appear here where this five is. Ignore this for a minute. So here it goes. And it's Kevin Hill. Congratulations, Kevin. Okay, um, exciting overall race. Terry Van Kessel has now moved into a tie with Brad Bond for the overall lead with 231 points. Uh, this race is extremely close. Uh, we could have four or five guys tied for the top. But there, there's something like uh, 15 or 20 players, maybe 19 players or whatever, within five points of the lead. Uh, I expect this thing to go down in the last week and I wouldn't be surprised if it's a tie. And if it is a tie, the tiebreaker will be broken at men's goals. If they can't make that, unfortunately, uh, uh, I can't do much about that. The, the tiebreaker will be at men's goals if there is a tie. So just um, notice that, and, and we'll get to that in a second when the tiebreaker is. Had some uh, interesting things happen. Uh, we've had uh, the uh, team... Uh, playoffs have, are continuing um, in the A finals. It's uh, the semis are there. Team Aerosmith will play take on Team Abu with great matchup. Tyler makes a prediction on that one. And in the other finals, Team Bonasteel and Team Fitzgerald, two two uh, uh, of the highest seeded teams. Uh, team Bonasteel fourteen, Team Fitzgerald fifteen will face off in the other semi. So that'll be interesting. In the B finals, Team Watson versus Team Casenzo. Can hardly wait to see who wins that one. That's going to be a good match. Team Pennington will take on Team Dale Riddell. And in the C final, uh, Team Trenholm will take on Team Jardine. While in the D final, uh, the other semi will see Team St. Louis take on Team Shaku. Tyler makes predictions on all those, so I'll show you those in a second. Um, the flight finals, uh, I've got a little blurb on the website about that, but it, uh, the A flight finalist was Chris Deirdrick. The B flight final, a bit of a, a mismatch on scoring. They kind of got the scoring confused. And by the time they figured out who had, what had happened, they had to have a playoff. And it began on 14. And John LaChance prevailed. Jim Kelly, to no one's surprise, won C. He's, he, he plays big in these things. He, he's, a, he's a player. And in the B final, again, another player, Bill McGregor, took that one. So... Those four gentlemen will meet next week. We, uh, I thought we could play at 11.57. Uh, Chris is going to have a hard time making that time. I'll try and uh, find a time when we can uh, make an all the work. So let's stay tuned for Tyler's predictions. Well, Tyler, 
here we are, September 13th. You've made some predictions last week. You're going to make some more this week. Let's see how you did last week in the, uh, the three uh, finals. First of all, in the C final, the C final, you pick Team Coil to beat Team Jardine. The score, Team Coil 32, Team Jardine 33. So they, uh, so you missed that one. You missed that one. <laughs> okay. So in the B final, okay. So you picked Team Casenzo, mm -hmm. uh, and they were playing Team Bruce McDonald. Okay, Team Bruce McDonald, thirty-five. Mm -hmm. Team Casenzo, thirty-six. So you go. <laughs> All right. And in the a finals, you picked uh, a Team Abu over Team Bags, and um, Team Abu at 35, Team Bags 31. So Team Abu moves on. <laughs> hey, two out of three. Yeah, you did. Yeah, two out of three. Very good. Excellent work. That's hard to do. <laughs> In the flight finals, you have we, uh, uh, you had, um, let's see, who did you have? I think you picked Dave Trudell. Wait a minute. Hold on. Uh, I can't. I can't. I think you're right. I remember picking Dave. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So flight finals. Mm -hmm. You picked uh, Bill McGregor to win the D. Mm -hmm. He did. You picked Mark Asenzo to win the C. Good guess. But yeah. Messed up. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 Jim Kelly won. However, mm -hmm. uh, Jim is a, a, a retired uh, lineman, uh, electrical guy, and apparently there's a storm coming, uh, Hurricane Lee. He may be called out of the country next year to do some work. So if that's the case, Mark will play for him because he oh, went. Yeah. Uh, in the B, you picked Dave Trudell, and, and Dave backed out. So I'm going to give you. Um, I'm going to give you a pass on that one. There's no call on that. And you made a good prediction for the A. You picked Chris Diedrich, and he did win. Mm -hmm. So you did pretty good. You picked two out of three, and mm -hmm. uh, that's hard to do. Okay, so now we're going to go to this next week. I've got some matchups for you. We're going to start with the C playoffs. Um, let's see if I can get this up here. Okay, C playoffs. You have in C, you have Team St. Louis versus Team Chapu. Mm. We're going with Team Chapu. Team Chapu. Who over Team St. Louis? Okay. And that's a good pick because they all show up and uh they all they all do fairly well. And uh all right. So, yeah, we've got a good team there. All right, in the B playoffs, oh, I love this matchup. Team Watson, because I, lo I love Ken Watson, mm -hmm. versus Team Casenzo, and I love Mark Casenzo. Both good teams, both good. Look at these players, Fleming, Gosselin, McKellar, Watson, and Woodhouse versus Casenzo, Fisher, Gervin, Henderson, and McLaughlin. Uh, that's a tough one, John. Um, oh, no, boy. All right, we're going with Team Watson for the win. Team Watson for the win. Okay, over Team Casenzo. Casenzo. All right, we're just writing that down so we can we can get it back. Now in the A playoffs, a great matchup, probably oh. a classic. Defending or uh, former champions, uh, Team Aerosmith. Always tough. Look at this team. Uh, mm -hmm. Baker, Burkers, uh, Aerosmith, and Richardson, Dorkin. Very tough team versus another tough team. Abu, Makai, uh, Marcotte, Presso, and Trudell. These guys uh, are always there. They're always showing up. They're always playing hard, and they know it's at stake here. A win here, they go to the finals in the A. Two tough teams. Uh, I don't know. I don't know who to pick here. This is tough. Um, I think this is going to be a one-point decider between both teams here. Um, I'm going to go with uh, Team uh, Team Ovid. Dave Ovid's going to win this one. Well, you know they're due. Uh, 
Uh, mm -hmm. They've been to the finals before, uh, uh, but Team Aerosmith has won the championship before. They're the number one seed going in. No number one seed has ever won the, the A final, so uh, they are fighting the odds right now. But they're hanging on. They they they, they didn't have a great. Uh, they only won. They won thirty seven thirty one over Team Nicholson, which was a surprise on Team Nicholson's part because Nicholson usually comes up big in these games. So. Okay, in the flight final, look who we've got here. We've got Chris Deirdre, John LaChance, Jim Kelly, and Bill McGregor. <laughs> I don't know who to pick here. Any one of these guys, anyone could win this thing. Wow. All right. Uh John, this is a, yeah, this is a more of a guess than a than a than a prediction. Um I'm going with uh I'm going with Chris Diedrich. Diedrich. Okay. All right, we'll see how that happens. But you know what? There's some good players there. Uh, it's going to be a tough one. I've got you. I've got you under Diedrich here, but uh, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I'm so sure. Tyler, uh, thank you very much. Uh, great predictions. You stick your neck out again, but you did really well last week. I, mm -hmm. I uh, you, you seem to know the, seem to the. You get any feedback from the guys? They're giving you a hard time. Oh yeah, anyone who I don't pick, they're all upset with me. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about my students. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell them to take some lessons so you'll pick. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> anyway, thanks, Tyler. We'll see you again next week. Thanks, John. Okay, just uh, a word on men's clothes. Um, Men's clothes begin September 30th. Registration for it will begin next week. I need one person to reg register your five-person team. It's a handicapped event. The handicaps will be based, I'm not sure if we use the uh, men's league handicaps. I think we did last year uh, on an 18-hole men's handicap. So it's much like the RBC scramble. In fact, it's exactly like how we calculate the handicap for the team using the RBC scramble formula, a uh, very similar format. Each player hits. Uh, if we use that we shot off the drive, the one player shot, who shot we did use uh, sits out that one and then continues that way until you put out. I think you have to use so many drives by, by each player. I'm not sure the, the exact rules they'll be published. Anyway, what you need to know if you're registering a team, are they coming for breakfast? And are they coming to the uh, banquet afterwards? Uh, that will be on the registration form. So please make sure you've checked with your players. Uh, they need to have numbers for those two things. So, uh, you know, last year, the 30 people said they were coming for breakfast. All of a sudden, 60 showed up. They weren't ready for you. Uh, the banquet afterwards uh, was pretty good. Everybody said, yeah, I'm coming or I'm not coming. The one thing I will tell you, both the banquet afterwards and the breakfast are not included in your men's league fees. I did not put them in. And people ask me, why not? Well, when we had 120 players, I could put them in because everybody could come. Uh, now that we have 240 players, not everybody can play in the final. So why should they be paying for something that they can't pay, partake in? So it's a separate fee. I took that fee, whatever I, I, that's why men's league fees were a lot lower this year. That money, is if you're going to the banquet, uh, can be used there. Finally, uh, Jared Coyle passed a milestone this week. He is now second overall in number of birdies for the uh, year, passing David Wright's brilliant 38 birdie uh, record set in 2014. Uh, Jared got his 39th birdie yesterday. He's still eight, nine behind Robert Mustard, and it's going to be tough to catch Robert, who had 48 birdies last year. He, he really set a mark. But uh, congratulations, Jared. Uh, very good for you. Every year, Jared's up there. He, he uh, uh, does a, you know, He's such a steady player and uh, got another birdie yesterday to move ahead. So I think that's everything. And then so until next week, uh, play well. <laughs>